piece of carbon steel and an empty beaker at this point. And here I have a uh, container of concentrated nitric acid, which I'm going to pour on top of the, of the uh, carbon steel that's in there until it's covered, but just barely covered. And so there we go. And now you, you see, what you, what you essentially see is nothing. There's, there's no reaction going on. And really, at the, if we were able to measure the reaction rate between the acid and the steel, we would find out that there's essentially no, no chemical reaction taking place. It's taking place at a negligibly slow rate. And if I go in with a glass rod and I scratch the surface, I see that nothing happens. So, and not, now nitric acid is a very corrosive chemical. Uh, but when in the concentrated form, in concentrated form, what happens when you pour nitric acid on bare steel like that is the steel passivates itself. And what that means is that a very, very thin, just, just atoms thick layer uh, that contains oxygen and some other chemicals forms on the surface. And it's like, it's like magic paint. Okay, so it's, it's too thin to see. And if I scratch it and make it go away, it instantly reforms. And and that the metal remains passive. Okay, so I'm, I'm showing you this with this glass rod, and you're thinking, well, okay, that's not so, you know, I don't really get it. Um, so that's why we need part B of the demonstration. So in part B of this demonstration, I'm going to do something they teach you to never do in chemistry lab, and that's to add water to an acid. You're supposed to add acid to water. Okay, so I'm going to go very, and the reason, reason for that is because the, the uh, enthalpy of mixing is, is significant when you add, frequently when you add acid to, to water, or when you mix an acid with a water, and, um, and it's possible to get splattering and things like that. So if you, when you're adding water to, to acid, it's possible to get, to get some pretty strong acid to splatter out of there. So I'm going to try to be really careful when I do this, pour it in really slowly, and I'm going to try to basically double the volume here. Now I've got a little over 50 mils. Of, of concentrated acid in there. I'm going to try to go up to around 100. Slowly. See how warm that feels. Yeah, the, the beaker feels warm. Um, there's steam coming out of it. Yeah, no, it, it's definitely, there's definitely some heat being generated there. When you look at it, and I don't know if you want to get any closer, Laura, with your camera, it still looks like the piece of steel is sitting in a glass of water. I mean, there's, there's no gas bubbles at the surface, there's no change in color, there's no nothing going on. Okay? But I have now diluted the acid about two to one. So I've, I've gone from, I don't know how many molar acid, to half that. And so now, here comes the, hopefully, the exciting part. So now, it, in theory, what I've done now is I've gone from a situation where the iron was stable passive to a situation where it is unstable passive. And what that means is if I scratch the, the magic paint off the surface, it will not be able to reform, and we will get a very vigorous reaction. And that's, so that's, that's the whole demo here. So hopefully this will work, and you won't have like, wasted all those electrons. gas that's being given off is poisonous. <laughs> <laughs> what gas is that? It's uh, um, nitric oxide. So look at that. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Just to blow my mind every time I do that. <laughs> Now, I could get it to go, I could repassivate it if I poured in enough concentrated acid. nitric acid, but I'd have to pretty much fill the beaker. So I'm not, I don't usually do that. So. Would it just like stop reacting? Yeah. Yeah, it would go back, it would go back to the, to the stable passive state. I could repassivate it. Should be able to get it to calm down a little bit as I keep diluting it.
also a, a tough classroom demonstration because that red gas that comes off there <laughs> is really not good for you. Yeah. <laughs>